Hey Pokemon fans, I'm Almighty Arceus, and this is part 2 in the series of Poketuber mascots that should get Alolan forms in Pokemon Sun and Moon. To see part 1, click the annotation right here. Basically, I've got the concepts and Cool Shallow's got the design skills, so we've come together to create concepts for Alolan forms of Pokemon based on Poketuber mascots. Make sure to like and share this video with these Poketubers so they can see the cool stuff we've made in honor of them. Without further ado, let's get started. Coming up first is Shofu with Alolan Darmanitan. This was one of the concepts that was probably the most fun to design. Regular Darmanitans have a hidden ability called Zen Mode. This ability makes Darmanitan change forms from Dharma Mode to Zen Mode when its HP goes below 50%. The problem with this is that Darmanitan is pretty frail, so it doesn't utilize this ability well at all. We've taken that ability and improved it with its new Alolan form. This new ability is called Kala Mode, and it acts like this. When a super effective move is used against Darmanitan, just before the attack hits, Darmanitan changes from Kala Mode to Moe Mode. Likewise, if Darmanitan uses a super effective move on the opponent, Darmanitan will switch back into Kala Mode. Kala is a Hawaiian word used to refer to sun, volcanoes, and energy, which represents the more energetic attack form of Darmanitan. Moe means dormant, which represents the calm, protective form of Darmanitan. This ability is a vast improvement on Zen Mode, as it allows Darmanitan to take advantage of its defensive form before getting wiped out by the enemy. This makes this form change much more competitively viable, leading to more creative use in battle. Since we have a form change happening, we have two different forms to show off for our designs. Both forms will be Grass Fire types, a combination that everyone has been anticipating for Generation 7. Here is what Moe Darmanitan would look like. In this form, Darmanitan has wooden armor that covers his body, suggesting the defensive form that he takes in this mode. This form makes him look like an extinguished Tiki Torch, as if he's protecting the flame within from whatever super effective attack is coming his way. The stats for this form would be nearly identical to Zen Mode Darmanitan, with perhaps more boosts in defense and special defense for good measure. With access to Grass-type moves like Giga Drain and Leech Seed, Moe Darmanitan could take super effective hits and then heal up with a subsequent attack. When Darmanitan launches a super effective attack against an opponent, Kala Darmanitan takes form. This form is visually much more energetic, with a blazing fire atop an angry Darmanitan Tiki face. Gala Darmanitan is ready to dish out some crazy moves. With access to Grass-type moves, Gala Darmanitan can pack a punch with Wood Hammer, Giga Drain, and Power Whip. If Sheer Force was still in effect, and Darmanitan stayed in this form, Wood Hammer would become a huge threat and counter to many water types who might try to take it down. Not to mention, the Grass typing neutralizes the damage that he would take from water types. No matter what form, this Alolan Darmanitan is a much more versatile and sturdy attacker that could likely move up a tier with all these new changes. This is definitely the most complicated design we have here, so I hope this was fun for you to see, Shofu. Next up we have the King Nappy with Alolan Gengar. Cool Shallow and I were looking over some Hawaiian folklore and ghost stories, and we came across the legend of the Green Lady of Wahiawa. Legend has it that a mother took her child to Waiaha Gulch. This child was lost and never found, and the mother died of heartbreak. To this day, the spirit of the woman wanders the gulch, often appearing in thick fog or rain. Those who have seen her say her body is a deep green with skin of scales, seaweed and moss growing off on her hair, and pointed yellow teeth. This was one of the spookier legends of the islands that we thought would work perfectly for a variation on Gengar that would be suitable for the Alola region. Alolan Gengar would be a Grass Ghost type. This variant of Gengar would get a new ability called Moss Guard, which normalizes damage from super effective moves when rain is active. This will aid in giving Gengar possible defensive angles, or at least not getting one hit KO'd everywhere. We've covered Gengar in Seaweed and Moss just like the Green Lady, and have also added some piercing yellow eyes and sharp teeth to embody this demonic fish ghost lady thing. Slight stat boost in defense and special defense would also help, but to keep him balanced, at least more balanced than Mega Gengar, drops in special attacks should compensate. Gengar already has access to a lot of moves, but being themed as an algae-covered ghost will grant it access to water-type moves as well. Moves like Scald, Hydro Pump, and Surf are now weapons in its arsenal, which makes pairing it with Rain a real threat to people who challenge it. Hope you dig this spooky design, the King Nappy. Next up we have Num Nexus and Alolan Meryl. 
So Num Nexus' mascot is actually an Azumarill, which got us thinking about its evolution line and how Meryl was originally referred to as Pika Blue by fans. Everyone thought they'd be related, part of a similar concept, etc., but it turns out they were just another evolution line. So, in the spirit of Alolan Forms and the 20th anniversary of Pokemon, we thought Alolan Meryl should be a callback to this original fan form stuff. Alolan Meryl used to be a water type, but thanks to pollution from <clears throat> a particular source, the Aether Foundation, see my video for why they're more sinister, their genetic structure mutated close to that of a related mouse species. Wink wink. It's often unable to contain electric bursts that come out of it. It uses the ball on its end of its tail to generate large amounts of static electricity. Being around one for too long can cause sickness because it's slightly radioactive. Alolan Meryl would be an electric poison type with the abilities Poison Touch, Static, and Huge Power. As you can see, we stayed very loyal to the original design of Pika Blue, what with the original purple coloration that's seen in the 1999 version. That coloration actually inspired the origin for this Pokemon. The ball that is typically used for flotation by regular Meryl is now used to generate electricity. Being a completely different type and of a slightly different form, Alolan Meryl has access to a completely different moveset. However, because of access to huge power, we'll keep the moveset much more physical. Access to new electric type moves cover a lot of bases. For example, Volt Switch would keep it away from taking a lot of damage while at the same time dealing a lot with huge power at its side. Volt Tackle would also be a cool thing to see on Alolan Meryl to suggest its relation to Pikachu. New poison type moves like Toxic and Sludge Bomb round out the fact that it's a complete check to its original typing, Water and Fairy, while also being a radioactive version of the original Pokemon. This little electric ball of radioactive fuzz certainly has gone through a lot to get where it is, so I hope you appreciate the callback, Num Nexus. Next up we have Cuddle of Death and Alolan Houndoom. This mon, just like Gengar, has a Mega already, but we had a great idea with respect to the concept of Houndoom. Similar to Absol, Houndoom is thought of as an omen of disaster and death. The name alone suggests the idea of tragedy and ultimate destruction. Events like natural disasters often bring about these kinds of tragedies. Houndoom themselves line up with fire, hell, and volcanic eruptions. It would be the perfect dog for someone like Ares, God of War, who is also associated with these things. For its Alolan form, we thought we'd take inspiration from a different set of disasters and a different god, Poseidon and Tidal Waves. Alolan Houndoom are water dark types with the abilities Drizzle and Torrent. They are the onbringers of Tidal Waves. If one appears before you on the beach, you should evacuate, as it's a sign that a tidal wave is on its way. You can see clearly from its design that it's been influenced by Poseidon. We've adapted some trident and harpoon aspects to make this dog menacing as well as suited for the ocean. The blues and golds in its color scheme are reminiscent of this feature. Houndoom's stats should remain about the same. The ability Drizzle will end up pairing well with its new moveset. Not to mention Alolan Gengar. Y'all should team up. Being a water type grants it access to new moves like Scald, Surf, and Hydro Pump, which will make it a new water type Titan, especially in lower tiers. Alolan Houndoom will essentially be the water dark type that isn't banned to Ubers, and I'm sure we can all be thankful for that. Hope you like it, Cuddle of Death. Wrapping up our list is Sleepy Jirachi with Alolan, you guessed it, Jirachi. This design was simple, cute, and easily fitting for the Alola region. It's said to appear at the end of important ceremonies, weddings, and other events in which good luck and good tidings are placed upon someone. It's said that if you receive a lay from this Pokemon, you will be blessed with good luck for the rest of your life. We've taken the Hawaiian tradition of lays and adapted it to the Wishmaker Pokemon, even though Pokemon kind of beat us to the punch already with a lay Pokemon. Alolan Jirachi would be a Grass Fairy type with the abilities Prankster and Hyper Luck, a new ability that ups the critical hit ratio by two. Look at how freaking adorable it is! With that little hula skirt and the beautiful lays on it, I want one right now, oh my god. Its abilities help compensate for some of the new weaknesses that Alolan Jirachi would inevitably face. What with it going from being immune to poison type moves to now being four times weak to it, and with a new steel type weakness, etc. All that stuff. But paired with Leaf Blade, Psycho Cut, and perhaps even Night Slash for fun, Hyper Luck would be an impenetrable force, especially once Scope Lens was equipped. I'm talking 100% critical hit ratio, y'all. Prankster would make it a better Whimsicott that has the possibility of walling because of its better stats. To top it all off, and to possibly make it even more ridiculous, just to make sure it gets banned, because it has a hula skirt, I find it only fitting for it to learn dance moves. 
Quiver Dance would be cool to see, but would Jirachi then be too unchecked? If not given too many special attacks, then I don't really think so. Either way, this guy seemed like a fun, adorable take on Jirachi. Hope this video didn't make you too sleepy, sleepy Jirachi. Ha 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 ha. I hate my life. Well, that's all we've got, but we want to hear from you. What Poketubers deserve to have their mascot redesigned into an Alolan form? Let us know in the comments below. I'm Almighty Arceus here with Cool Shallow. Thanks so much for watching.